friends, it's me, Mint, and I have a really exciting project to share with you today. There's a publication called Fay Magazine that issued a challenge for a challenge versus call of submissions during this lockdown time to have fans and subscribers recreate in their own spirit a piece inspired by the famous Cottingley Fairies portraits. In the spirit of Terry Jones and Brian Froud's recreation, I got really inspired and decided to do my own. So what are the Cottingley Fairies? There is such a legacy to this that I honestly didn't even know where to begin. I read more than I thought I ever knew about them. I remember seeing the movie in like the early 90s based on them. And I remember seeing Brian Froud's recreation and that was really the most context that I had going off of it. So thank you to Fame Magazine for inspiring me to keep learning and keep my time at home magical. Over 100 years ago, from 1917 to 1920, Elsie Wright and her younger cousin, Frances Griffith, took a series of five photographs of them playing in their back garden stream, frolicking with fairies, gnomes, and elfin figures. These photos captivated their mother, who truly believed that the girls were contacting and playing with fae creatures in the wild, and their garden in Cottingley. Elsie's mother was a spiritualist and attended a meeting in 1919 and gave copies of the photos to the speaker at this meeting. The photos were shared and made public in 1919 and were touted not only as proof of the supernatural, but evidence that humans were advancing to be able to see and interact with the supernatural in ways that they never could before. The photos were given to a photography expert named Harold Snelling to analyze them as truth or a hoax, and he admitted that the photos depicted exactly what was in front of the camera. This was probably his clever, not untrue way of saying he thought they were a hoax. But people weren't convinced. They went on to still believe the Cottingley Fairy portraits were real photos of the Fae folk, and they continued to garner attention and spectacle. I painted mine with watercolor in very bright colors, hoping to make sure that they would stand out against the backdrop of my patio, which only gets light from the north. For their wings, I used cellophane wrapping paper reinforced with some clear boxing tape because it's very thin on its own and tends to wrinkle. I tried to draw some veins in with Sharpie at first, but it didn't really work, so instead I used a metallic gold acrylic paint to add veins and it also left a beautiful sparkly sheen where it was on the wings and I think that worked out really well so I'm glad I found that as a resource in my bag of art supplies. In 1920 Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wrote to Elsie Wright's father Arthur to use the photos with his own article on fairies in the stand magazine and he said of the photos the recognition of their existence will jolt the material 20th century mind out of its heavy ruts in the mud and will make it admit that there is a glamour and mystery to life. Having discovered this, the world will not find it so difficult to accept that spiritual message supported by the physical facts which has already been put before it. Throughout his life, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was an ardent spiritualist and believer in the occult, and later in 1920, the girls actually took more photos at his specific urges, although the spectacle of the girls was fading fast and trends were moving onward. In my own reproduction of the Cottingley Fairies, with my own style and spirit, I wanted to recapture that they were drawn to be interacting with the environment. They're very lively and they're very spirited and very mischievous. In 1978, it was pointed out that the fairies in the pictures poses matched figures in the 1915 children's book, Princess Mary's Gift Book, which was published just two years before the first photos were taken by the girls. In a 1981 interview for the Unexplained magazine, Elsie Wright confessed that the fairies were paper cutouts of her own sketches. She had drawn the fairies using the poses and the illustrations of the book as inspiration, added wings in her own drawings, and then 
put the paper cutouts in place with hat pens around the photos. And now for some staging. Staging was really the most fun part because I wanted to make it look lively, convincing, always things just placed artistically enough and aesthetically enough to use the small space I have to the best of its potential. This little making of piece actually goes with my final images that were submitted and will be published in the next issue of Faye Magazine. So I'm probably going to hold off on publishing this publicly so that it can be viewed in the magazine. There's links down below in the description. Check it out and thanks for supporting me by watching. Ta! Till next time!